Speaking of Christmas carols, almost everyone loves the Christmas carol angels we have heard on high. You know why it's a favorite for so many people? Because everyone knows the chorus. It's easy to sing. You just have to know one word, Gloria. In the biblical text that Cynthia read for us today from the Gospel of Luke, everyone sings Gloria. First, the angels sing it, and then the shepherds sing it. Everyone singing Gloria in the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. But oddly enough, the month of December can be the hardest time of the year for many of us to sing Gloria. And this year has been no exception. Three weeks ago, I was in the intensive care unit at Memorial Medical Center to see two of our church members. And I bumped into my friend Sam Bice, who is the minister of St. Peter's Episcopal Church. Sam also had two members in the intensive care unit. I said, Sam, what is going on? And he turned and looked at me and said, it's Advent. And he's right, every year during the Christmas holidays, there seems to be a tsunami of illnesses and accidents and deaths. I officiated two funerals this week and attended another. Uh, Ray Ellis, our minister of music, had an uncle pass away. Randy Kennedy, our church administrator, attended a funeral of a close friend this week. Our church has had a slew of people who've had surgeries in the last several weeks, and it seems like every other person here has the flu. Not to mention all of the crazy and tragic stuff happening in our country and overseas. How in the world, how in the world can we sing Gloria? How do we experience the Christmas spirit when there is so much to be down about? Those of you who have been attending Asbury for a number of years know that I have a special remedy that helps me when my spirit is sagging during the Christmas season. I discovered this remedy a number of years ago when I was in a really bad mood during the holidays and on this night I did not want to go out into the busy holiday traffic and deal with the long lines at Walmart to buy, of all things, bug spray. <laughs> but roaches can be powerful motivators. <laughs> so off I went, and as I'm standing in line at Walmart with my can of bug spray, I notice a display of Christmas CDs. And at first I said, bah humbug to this display of CDs. I was tired of hearing Christmas music. It all sounded so sappy and syrupy and samey and Pollyannish to me. It certainly didn't register with my mood. But I also knew that music can be great medicine. That the right music can soothe the savage beast. And I was a beast that needed to be soothed. And so I thought to myself, why don't you see if there's a CD that has some different kind of Christmas music on it? Since Bing and Perry and Johnny are not working for you this year, try something different and maybe it will help you. And for those of you who don't know Christmas music, that's code for Bing Crosby, Perry Como, and Johnny Mathis. So I get out of line and mosey over to the display of CDs and I start rummaging through them. And they, of course, had Bing, Perry, and Johnny, but I needed something different this year. And I finally, finally found two that caught my eye, and I got them. One was the Jethro Tull Christmas album. <laughs> That's one you don't see every day. I didn't know Jethro Tull made a Christmas album. And if you like fast flute music, this is the album for you. 
The other CD had a variety of African-American artists singing traditional Christmas carols, Christmas songs. One song was a very cool arrangement of I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. It was sung by a group called The Impressions, and it had a real giddy-up to it and some fabulous harmonies. But the song I liked best, the song that spoke to my heart, the song I needed to hear that year was a version of I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas. It was sung by the Dawson, Georgia native and perhaps the greatest male soul singer of all time, Otis Redding. I had never heard White Christmas sung like this before. It was sung with such passion and soul. Otis Redding is crying out for a white Christmas, lamenting. He's begging for it to happen. You can tell he's hurting and he wants something to lift him up. And as I listened to the song, I said, I know what you mean, Otis. I need something to lift me up to. And as I played this soulful song over and over again, I felt my thoughts and feelings synthesizing with the thoughts and feelings of Otis Redding. And I started singing along with him. I was expressing my feelings. I was lamenting. And afterwards, I felt better. I felt cleansed, renewed. I felt like I could now go and sing Gloria. Now that sounds strange, I know, but it's not strange if you have studied the book of Psalms. The Psalms are the soul songs of the Bible. There are Psalms that express great joy and happiness. We call them Psalms of Thanksgiving or Psalms of Praise. Psalm 100 is a great example of one. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Those were the kinds of Psalms many of us learned when we were children. But there's another type of psalm I didn't learn about until I was much, much, much older, and they are called the Psalms of Lament, L-A-M-E-N-T. And these psalms express great sorrow, great pain, great frustration, great sadness. Jesus recited one of these psalms, Psalm 22, when he's on the cross, when he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's part, that's how Psalm 22 begins. Another great psalm of lament is Psalm 13. How long, O Lord? How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? You see, these psalms of lament are always expressing things like, Hear us, restore us, help us. How long? Why? Why have you done this? Why have you allowed this? Do you hear their openness? Their honesty. Somebody has a cell phone going off. Please turn it off. Okay. I didn't know you could express yourself to God like that until I discovered the laments. But the psalmist knew. And Otis Redding knew that the atheist may complain, but the believer can protest. You hear that? The atheist may complain, but the believer can protest because the believer believes there's someone to get angry to. He or she believes there's someone to cry out to. Our protest Therefore, our questions end up being affirmations of faith. Do you know how Psalm 13 ends? 
This psalm that rails out to God with all of this frustration and questioning ends this way. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. You see, after the psalmist has expressed anger and frustration by saying things like, God, why did you hide your face from me? The psalmist ends by saying, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord for he has been good to me. The same thing happens with Psalm 22, the one that begins with, my, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At the end of each lament, the psalmist changes his or her attitude. After the psalmist, the psalmist expresses his or her honest feelings, something wonderful happens. The attitude train changes. There's a transformation. The psalmist experiences hope and trust. If you are having trouble getting into the Christmas spirit this year, in this chaotic world, the first question I would ask you is this, are you praying? Are you communing with God, conversing with God? Are you going to the source? After all, you are spirit. We're all in costumes. Your essence is spirit. So are you going to the great spirit to be renewed? The second question I would ask you is, how are you praying? How are you praying? Are you being honest with God? Or are you just kind of doing polite, rehearsed prayers? If that's the case, it's not getting the job done. Try doing that with your husbands or your wives or partners or friends. Just give them the pat answers. Never go deep with them. Never share your deepest thoughts and feelings. And let's see what your relationship develops into. It will develop into nothing. It will be shallow. This is especially challenging for men. We talk about sports and the weather, our jobs, but most men tend not to have deep, honest conversations with many people. And thus, a lot of men have very few deep, meaningful relationships. And that's why I'm so glad we've started this Thursday evening men's group. When we are authentic with God, when we are honest with God, when we share our feelings, we get blessed. For it is only with those who are totally honest with that we draw closer to. So if you're having trouble getting into the spirit of the season, it does no good to blame Santa Claus or the busy traffic are even the tragedies that seem to come along so often at this time of year. If our spirits are low, it's because we are not connecting enough with the source. If you want to help your spirits, if you want to be able to sing Gloria, then the best thing to do is to get in touch with the source of your spirits, the Great Spirit. Therapy can be helpful. Friends can be helpful. A Bible study can be helpful. A thousand dollars can be helpful. But none of those things are going to give you life in its fullness. If you really want to do some spirit lifting, the best thing to do is to go to the source. And that's what the shepherds did. Remember, their spirits had to be low. Shepherds were looked down upon in that culture at that time. They lived outside the boundaries of their society. They were assumed to lead shiftless lives. They would hardly be considered trustworthy sources for any news of importance. They had a lot to be down about. And then the angels came and said, Go to Bethlehem and see. 
And they are the first ones to hear, the first ones to see, and the first ones to tell of Jesus' birth. They go forth and sing Gloria because they went to Bethlehem and connected with the source. You see, the word Gloria comes from the word glory. The glory is the Jewish Shekinah. The glory is the divine presence of God or the face of God. In the Hebrew Scriptures, the presence of God, the face of God, the glory of God was the pillar of fire by night and the clouds by day. You could see the pillar of fire. You could see the cloud. The glory is ultra bright. The glory is fiery light. The glory is the gloria, the gloria of the angels in the sky. The glowing presence of the angels in the sky becomes a glowing presence of God in one's own heart. The glow is the fire within. And the shepherds realized that God was for them. Unlike everyone else who looked down upon them, they realized that God loved them. It made their hearts glow. And when we commune with God, when we realize that the great creator of the universe made us and values us and loves us, we start glowing. And so go to Bethlehem and see. Go to Bethlehem and see is a wonderful metaphor for going to, get, to going to get connected to the source. The angels are telling you and me, today and every day, go to Bethlehem and see. Go to the source. If you and I follow the angels' encouraging words, we will soon be singing Gloria, Gloria, Gloria. Amen and Amen. you what a beautiful service today thank you choir for the wonderful music and our musicians for those who can't be with us on Christmas Eve we wish you from the staff of the church to have a very Merry Christmas for those who will be here Christmas Eve we look forward to having you be sure to invite family and friends to this extraordinary worship experience and it looks like Nicholas has joined us just in time. <laughs> Perfect timing, St. Nick. Uh, let us go. Let us go with hope. Let us go with peace. Let us go with joy. Let us go with love. In the name of God, the Creator, in Christ, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.